Hello all, Shoestring here. I have another battery that I bought with my own money. And I'm going to do a review on it. This is a Power Queen 100 amp hour battery. Still in the box. I did just break it open for us. Let's see what we have inside. I did formally do a review on a Power Queen 200 amp hour. But this is the first one I've done on the 100 amp hour. It has a manual with it. That's always nice. And uh, take a quick look. Oh, and an initial quick start guide. I like that. Hope everyone can see that. And, of course, the manual. Right here, 12.8, 100 amp hour. Okay. So, set them to the side. And right on top, we have the bolts. We don't want to lose these. And a nice little arrow pointing at them. They look like the standard M8 bolts you get with any other battery. Yes, so that's good. And some covers. Let's see how many we got. How many do we have? We got a cover. We're going to be using these bolts, by the way, when we test this battery out in a bit. All right, so we have four bolts and two covers. Excellent. And there is the battery. Let's go ahead and pull it out. Okay, so we finally got it out of there. It has some bolt covers, which are good. And it has the cord. I don't really like straps. I'd rather have the handle. But they all come with these straps now. So it has the standard Power Queen colors. 12 volts at 100 amp hour, to which, of course, you do the math, comes out to 1280 watt hours. Take a look at it. It's not that heavy. Tells you what type of battery it is, but that's about all you see on the battery itself. Like most Power Queens, it feels stable. We'll go ahead and make sure the cables go in okay. And I want to point out the manuals is pretty good. It points out how to check the battery, how to connect it. So that's really, that's really good. A lot of these manuals, of course, are written in Chinese or some language that you can't even understand. But this is written in English, and it's written fairly well, so I like that. It has all the standard protections you would expect. It does not have low temperature, though. So if you're in an area or you think you're going to need low temperature, then... Um, you should probably look at another battery. But for batteries that are inexpensive and do, normally does a really good job, I would have you take a look at this one. Okay, so the bolts fit pretty well. It was packed really well. It looks real good. And what we're going to do next is we're going to test it. I'll set everything up for that, and I'll see you then. Okay, so the battery has, I yeah, will say, about... 1330 will be good. And that's about standard for when these batteries arrive. I'm going to charge it all the way up, and then we're going to do a discharge test and see if it really has 100 amp hours in it. It already passed the computer test, but as you know on this channel, I don't like to do just computer tests. I like to do real world. We're going to hook some fans, hook it up for about 10, 12 hours and at 100 watts and see if it really does 100 amp hours. So I have this 12 volt, 100 amp hour Power Queen LIFO 4 connected to a pure sine wave inverter. Just a little inexpensive one I got from AliExpress. I also have it connected to a kilowatt meter and to a power cord which is connected to two fans, which you see right there. I have charged 
the battery all the way up to 14.6 and then I've let it settle. All these lithium batteries, after you get them charged up, you give them a couple hours, an hour or so. This one has had two and it settles down. So let's go ahead and put the inverter on. And as you can see, it is 13.5. And we'll go ahead and take a look at the kilowatt meter and go ahead and make sure it's actually on kilowatts. There we go. Because this will do two settings. And we want the kilowatt because that's what we're going to be judging. Then we will, of course, turn our fans on. There we go. Now I have tested this with the computer and it does a really good job of holding its watts. In fact, it had actually when it drew it from the computer up to 105, 106. And that's good, but you have to remember these are just laboratory, we'll call them, events. Right now, we're actually gonna do real life, which is what I like. What are you gonna be using this battery for? Well, you're gonna be pulling power for things in your house. You're gonna be using fans. And one reason I use fans is because they have motors. You're gonna be using things with motors. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's see what we have here. We have 102 watts, which is pretty good. I wanted to pull right around 100. This is a little over. That's good. 12.9, we're getting a little bit of the voltage drop. That's also okay. So if you do the math, which is just taking your 12 volts and multiplying by 100, this should run between 12, 10 and 12 hours, we'll say. And that's because you're going to lose voltage just in the wiring, in the inverter. So you're not going to get 100% of what you would expect. But like I said, this is real world. So I'll consider anything between 10 and 12 hours successful. Okay, so that's the setup. That's how I'm going to do this one. Uh, stay till the very end of the video and I will give you an entire update on the battery, how we thought it worked, and everything that surrounds that. All right, we are at the two hour mark now. Let's see how we're doing. Both fans are still running. Kilowatt still says 100. And that says 12.8. But I'll tell you the truth. With these cheap Chinese inverters from AliExpress, sometimes they work well. This one's been working pretty good for the last year or so I've had it. But I don't always trust the LED. It's a good guideline, a guidepost to give you a general idea, but I wouldn't put a lot of faith into those. And so far, it is doing the right thing at two hours. Okay, it has been five hours since we started our little test. It is still running and we are halfway through. It says 12.6. We are still at a hundred watts. We're still running in the kilowatts 4.56 which is just about five so excellent. It is running the way it is supposed to be running. Everything still seems to be going smooth. Battery's not hot. Inverter's not Everything is going just fine. Everything's still running. So we are on schedule. It has now been seven hours. And let's check. And it says 7.05. So that's really good. So it's been keeping up with 100 watts exactly like it is supposed to. Let's go ahead and check. And the watts are still at 100. Great. Let's make sure we're at the right number. There we are. All right, and that has been seven hours. All right, it has gotten dark, but we are still running, and it has been 10 hours. The inverter says 12.2. Like I said, not that I'm trusting it all that much. Ooh, and our, there it is. Kilowatts, 10, nine. 10 hours and 10, nine. So that's great. Let's check our kilowatt, which is still right around 100. That's also really good. So we have done 10 hours and it is still running. 
that's excellent. That's the first major milestone we have to have. But we want to get to 12. That would be ideal. And we're going to keep right on rolling and see what happens. All right, folks, the inverter has stopped. And it is 12 hours and 25 minutes later, which is excellent. Just excellent. This went about 20, 25 minutes over the time I had anticipated. The inverter has stopped it at 11. If that hadn't happened, I wonder how much farther it would have went. But it doesn't matter. It has passed our test, and I'm very pleased. What we will do now, of course, is unhook this and charge it back up and see how long that takes, and then I'll give you some, some final thoughts. This was the Power Queen, 12.8 volt, 100 amp hours, and it actually performed a little bit better than I had expected with our little fan test going on here. It also passed the computer test, but as you know, I like to do these real life test with the motors running and what you folks would actually do if you were using this battery. So I checked, always check new batteries when they come in because you never know if there's going to be a defect. So let's see, the battery has a 100 amp BMS, which is good. It has the normal protection you would expect. It does not have low temperature, but Power Queen website does have batteries with heaters and low temperature cutoff. Uh, not at this price point. This one's only $229, which is really good <clears throat> for a battery that performs as well as this one. That's why I'm recommending it to you guys. Now, like I said at the beginning, we'll follow up with that again. Make sure I say it one more time. I bought this with my own money, and I'm not being paid to do this video. There is going to be a link to this battery in the description. I get a small fee that helps the channel if you want to use that link, so feel free. But other than that, no one's paying me to do anything. Okay? Uh, the battery can also be connected in parallel or series, up to four, either way. And overall, it works really well for battery storage. If you have any questions about the battery, because, of course, in these videos, I can't mention any everything you may ask, put it into the comments, please, and I'll answer as best I can. I can't really get to all of them, but I get to, you know, as many as I can get to. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe and share if you like this type of video. If you have any comments about how the video is done, just also put that down in the questions. My videos get better as you guys comment and give me constructive criticism, so I don't mind. And shoestring out.